Welcome back to the Geeky Boomer podcast. I am Pixel Pia, your host. Today, I want to talk to you about something very close to my heart, and that is e-learning. We're going to talk about the past, the present, and the future, and how it has impacted many different sectors of our society. We're going to start from correspondence courses to the online classroom, from elementary education to leisure learning. We're going to journey through the transformative power of e-learning. And we're even going to take a look at e-learning from an e-commerce perspective. But before we begin, let me share a little bit about my experience as a student online. It started back in Sweden. I have been teaching for 10 years and the internet started to really develop and had a lot of possibilities from a teaching perspective. The year was 1999 when I took my very first online course. The title of the course was Computers and Multimedia in Education and Teaching Material Production. It was mainly an online course, but we had two weekends where we all gathered up in the northern Sweden at Umeå University. One weekend at the beginning of the course and one weekend at the end where we all presented our project. The time for the total course was one semester and it is equivalent to seven and a half U.S. university credits. Some of the goals for this course was use internet for search, collection, and compiling data, use email and computer conferencing systems in various educational situations, design of computer applications, tools and methods for creating interactive multimedia documents, and the computer as a teaching aid. This first course it made me want much more. And my next course was in 2000. This time it was a course named To Tutor and Change Through ICT, Information and Communication Technology. This course was focused on the pedagogical and methodical use of internet, primarily in the elementary classroom. It was equivalent to 3.75 US credits and was 100% online. We used discussion boards, chat rooms, online conferences, and exchanged a lot of materials between students at its base. This course was in the south of Sweden, at Kristianstad College. At the same college, I also attended a very short course, only 20 hours the year after. And this course was called ThinkQuest, Create and Learn on the Internet. And it focused on using resources from the Internet, create and communicate on the Internet, and how to tutor students in project work. I have taken leisure courses as well. And the very latest one I took was at the Umeå University in Sweden, even though I have already moved to the US. The reason I took it at the Swedish University is that as a Swede, I have the privilege of having cost-free access to college and university courses. This course, which I took just for my own leisure learning, was Web Design Basics. And this was also a one semester course equivalent to 7.5 US credits. My latest and biggest investment 
was when I moved to U.S. and realized that to be a teacher here, I needed to go back to college. So I did my whole teacher's degree between the year 2007 to 2011 at Western Governors University, WGU. This was, as I said, my biggest online investment, both in time and money. And this was a very different experience from the courses I had taken earlier. And I might do a separate episode on this podcast just about that experience. So now you have an idea on my personal experience. Let's now move back in time and take a look at how we ended up where we are today. Our journey begins in the 19th century with the correspondence course. Yes, you heard me right, the 19th century. Sir Isaac Pittman, an Englishman, started teaching his shorthand system through correspondence in 1840s. Students would send their assignments to Pittman through the mail, and he would send them back the corrections. With this, the concept of learning without physically being in a classroom was born. Fast forward to the 20th century. Educational films and radio broadcast added another dimension to the distance learning. But the real revolution came in the 1960s with the introduction of Plato, P-L-A-T-O. Plato was the first generalized computer-assisted instructional system. Starting in the 1960s, it ran on mainframe computers and served thousands of users who could study a variety of subjects. Plato was truly ahead of its time. It had many features that are now standard in online learning systems, including multiple choice quizzes, text entry questions, graphics, and even social features like chat rooms and message boards. It was also responsible for many firsts in the computing world. It featured the first online community, and even the first multiplayer online games. Initially, Plata was primarily used at the University of Illinois, but by the 1970s, its use had spread to other educational institutions, high schools, and even military establishments across the United States and even around the world. For example, by the mid-1970s, the Plato system was being used to provide lessons to thousands of students in the Chicago public schools. While the use of Plato eventually declined with the growth of personal computers and the internet, it was a trailblazer that set the stage for the future of e-learning. Plato's influence can still be seen today in many of the tools and features we take for granted in modern online education systems. As technology advanced and the internet emerged in the 1980s and 1990s, so did the potential for digital learning. Universities started offering online courses and companies began to see the potential for training their employees remotely. The term e-learning was coined around 1999, and from then on, it has only grown. With the new millennium, e-learning exploded. With the arrival of learning management systems, or LMS, and MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, Quality education became accessible to anyone with an internet connection. 
e-learning platforms like Coursera, Udemy, Khan Academy, and others began to pop up, offering courses from cooking to coding and everything in between. And here we are today, in a world where, due to technology, learning is no longer confined to the four walls of a classroom. E-learning has democratized education, making it accessible, affordable, and flexible like never before. Today, e-learning is everywhere. It's in our homes, our workplaces, and our schools. It's a tool available to nearly everyone, and its presence has been magnified due to the realities of our modern world. In fact, it's become the norm in many settings. So let's break it down. In elementary education, teachers are using e-learning to supplement their classrooms. They're assigning online exercises, creating digital classrooms with tools like Google Classroom, and even flipping their classroom entirely where traditional homework is done in the classroom and the lecture time is spent at home watching video lectures. At the university level, e-learning has completely transformed higher education. Entire degrees can be earned online, like I did with my American teacher's degree. And universities are offering online classes to reach students, not just in their geographic region, but around the world. It's a global classroom that we are all part of now. In professional settings, companies are leveraging e-learning for training and upskilling their employees. They're using digital learning platforms that offers courses on everything from project management to machine learning. It's all about staying competitive and continuing to learn in a rapidly evolving world. And let's not forget about leisure learning. E-learning has opened the door for lifelong learning, where people can pursue interests outside of their profession Do you want to learn how to play guitar? There is a course for that. Interested in understanding the cosmos? There is a course for that. E-learning has made it possible for all of us to be students, no matter our age or stage of life. In short, e-learning is not just a tool. It is a revolution. It has broken down barriers, creating a world where anyone, anywhere, can learn anything. It's an exciting time for educators, and it's exciting to think about where we might go from here. So let's ponder where this might take us in the future. Artificial intelligence will play a huge role in the future of e-learning. It has the potential to create personalized learning paths where courses and its content are tailored to each learner's individual needs, pace, and preferred learning style. Imagine a course that adapts to you, not the other way around. Virtual and augmented reality will be important and creates enormous learning experiences that blurs the lines between learning and living. Imagine learning history by walking through a virtual reality version of ancient Rome or understanding anatomy through a 3D interactive representation of a human body. Big data is another frontier 
in e-learning. With so many students learning online, there is a wealth of data about how people learn, what they struggle with, and what techniques are most effective for online learning. This data can be used to constantly refine and improve e-learning courses, making them more efficient and more user-friendly. And looking beyond the technology, there is also a trend towards lifelong learning. The idea that learning ends with school is becoming outdated. E-learning platforms are making it easier for anyone to learn new skills, pursue an interest, or stay intellectually active throughout one's life. The job market is evolving rapidly, and continuous learning is becoming necessary to stay relevant. And finally, we see a future where education becomes more democratic. E-learning can reach across geography, economy, and social boundaries to provide quality education for all. As internet access continues to expand, we hope to see more opportunities for learning reaching every corner of the globe, if a globe has corners. Well, I can't predict the future, but one thing is clear. E-learning is here to stay, no matter what form it will take in the future. Its potential to transform how we learn is immense. And I, for one, are excited to see where this journey takes us. It's impossible to talk about the current state and future of e-learning without acknowledging the seismic shift caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. What was once an alternative or a supplement to traditional education suddenly became the primary means of instructions overnight. As schools and universities around the world were forced to close their doors in the early days of the pandemic, educators and students alike had to adapt quickly to remote learning. This catapulted e-learning from a slow-growing trend to an absolute necessity. Practically overnight, classrooms moved onto Zoom. Assignments were handed out on Google Classroom and parents got the crash course in homeschooling. Teaching online requires a different set of pedagogical skills. And I must say that from what I know about teacher education here in the US, it is not something most teachers were prepared for or got adequate support with when this shift happened. And I could probably spend a whole episode talking about what I think went wrong. But let's move on. It wasn't just academic education that saw a shift. Many individuals turned to e-learning to fill their time during lockdowns, picking up new hobbies or skills. Yoga classes, cooking courses, language lessons, you name it, someone was teaching it online. The world of e-learning suddenly expanded to include virtually any topic you could think of. This shift wasn't without challenges. There was a stark digital dividend that left some students struggling to access online learning resources due to lack of internet access or suitable devices. And let's not forget the Zoom fatigue from being online all the time or the difficulties in maintaining discipline and motivation in a home learning environment. However, despite the challenges, there were also some 
unexpected benefits. Many people found that e-learning offered flexibility that traditionally learning didn't. You could learn at your own pace, rewind and replay lectures, and have all your learning material at your fingertips. While the pandemic may have forced the world into e-learning, it's clear that its impact will continue to resonate in the post-pandemic world. It has accelerated the digital transformation of education and brought e-learning to the forefront of the discussion about how we teach and how we learn. It's clear that even when classrooms reopen, e-learning will remain an integral part of education. And the future will show how the sudden shift in educational approach will affect the students that were affected. Now we have talked about the history, the current state, and the future of e-learning. We have talked about its acceleration due to the pandemic. And now let's take a closer look at e-learning in different contexts. First, let's talk about elementary education. The use of technology in the classroom was on the rise even before the pandemic, but remote learning has pushed it into new levels. Teachers are creatively adapting using digital tools like Google Classroom, Kahoot, or Seesaw to engage their students. They're conducting virtual classes, assigning online exercises, and even leveraging games to make learning more fun. But it's not all rosy. Parents and educators have raised concerns about screen time, students' engagement, and the challenges of supporting learners with special needs in a virtual environment. Moving to formal education and universities, e-learning has transformed higher education and providing more accessibility and flexibility. Today, you can earn a degree, bachelor's, master's, and even PhDs entirely online. It's not just about access to the curriculum. It's also about collaboration, online discussion forums, group projects, and virtual office hours offer new ways to engage and to learn. But as with elementary education, there are challenges, like the need for self-discipline, maintaining academic integrity, and creating a sense of community. Finally, let's discuss e-learning as leisure learning. It's a new world for lifelong learners. From mastering photography to understanding astrophysics, the internet is a treasure trove of knowledge. Platforms like Masterclass, Skillshare, and Coursera offer courses in a wide variety of topics, making it possible to pursue new hobbies or interests at any. It's truly an enriching era where curiosity doesn't have to end when formal education ends. In all these contexts, it's clear that e-learning offers tremendous opportunities. It allows for personalized, self-paced learning and make education accessible to a wide audience. But it is also important to acknowledge the challenges and continue working towards solutions so that e-learning can truly be a powerful tool. And to truly appreciate the impact of e-learning, it's important that we look at both advantages and drawbacks from multiple perspectives. So let's dive into the pros and cons from the view of educators, students, 
parents and employers. Let's start with the pros. For educators, e-learning provides the opportunity to reach a global audience, not just those who can physically attend a class. It allows for flexible scheduling and flexible locations. And it offers a chance to experiment with new teaching methods and technologies. For students, they stand to gain immensely from e-learning. It offers flexibility to learn at their own pace, often with the ability to pause, rewind and replay. They have access to a vast variety of courses from traditional academics to unique interests and hobbies. Parents can see the benefits of e-learning, especially during the pandemic. It provides an opportunity for their children to continue education in a safe environment. And it gives the parents a chance to be more involved in their child's learning process. For employers, e-learning is a cost-effective and efficient way to train employees. It can quickly disseminate information across large organizations and allows for tracking and monitoring of employee progress. But it has its cons. Educators face challenges such as engaging students in a virtual classroom, dealing with technical issues, and adapting to new technologies and new teaching methods. For students, e-learning can sometimes lead to feeling of isolation and lack of motivation. Not all students have equal access to digital devices or reliable internet. Also, the lack of face-to-face -face interaction can affect learning, especially for those who thrive more in a social environment. Parents often struggle with the need to supervise and support their children's learning, particularly for younger children. Additionally, concerns about excessive screen time and ensuring a balanced lifestyle for their children are major issues. And from an employer perspective, not all training content may be suitable for online delivery. Also, there can be resistance from employees who are used to traditional training methods. Assessing the effectiveness of e-learning and ensuring its quality can also be challenging. E-learning has clear advantages. It's equally important to address its challenges. As the world of e-learning continues to evolve, the focus should be on leveraging its strength and finding solutions to its drawbacks. We have looked at e-learning from several perspectives so far, but there is one more angle that I want to talk about, and that is e-learning as a business. E-learning has grown into a multi-billion dollar industry and is a significant part of the e-commerce, which I talked about in my last episode. E-learning platforms are prime examples of this. Companies like Coursera, Udemy, Khan Academy and Masterclass offers a vast variety of courses and learning paths, often developed in partnership with universities and industry experts. They monetize through various models, from charging per course, offering subscription access, or providing courses for free and charging for the certification. There are also growing market for learning management systems, or LMS. These platforms help organizations manage and deliver online training and are often used by businesses to train their employees. They can track progress, provide feedback, and even use AI to personalize 
the learning experience. Beyond this, we see business leveraging e-learning for their own workforce training. It's a cost-effective way to train staff, especially for companies with employees spread out geographically. E-learning enables consistent training delivery, flexible learning schedules, and the ability to update materials quickly in response to changing industry trends. E-learning is also a positive for solopreneurs or small businesses. If you have a specific skill or knowledge, you can create your own online course and sell it. Reaching a global audience, platforms like Teachable or Kajabi make this easier than ever. However, as with any e-commerce business, there are challenges. The competition is fierce and differentiating your product can be tough. Ensuring quality and maintaining the trust of learners is critical. And of course, there's the constant need to adapt and evolve with technology and learner expectations. E-learning has emerged as a major player in the world of e-commerce, transforming how we think about education and learning. It has opened up new opportunities for businesses, educators and learners, and it's a trend that is likely to continue growing in the future. It is clear that the world of e-learning is vast and multifaceted. From its humble beginnings in correspondence courses to today's enormous digital learning environments, e-learning has come a long way. We have explored how it has impacted various sectors from elementary education to the world of work and has become a fundamental part of our lives, whether for formal education or leisure learning. The pandemic has only accelerated this trend, making e-learning a staple in many households, schools and workplaces. We have also looked at its role in the business world, emerging as a significant part of the e-commerce and opening up countless opportunities for entrepreneurs, small businesses and large corporations alike. As we look into the future, it is crucial to remember that while e-learning presents immense opportunities, it also brings challenges. Not every learner has equal access to the necessary technology. Not every educator feels comfortable or is able to engage students in a virtual environment. And the sheer volume of options available can sometimes feel overwhelming. As we forge ahead, let's continue to focus on leveraging the benefits of e-learning while addressing these challenges. By doing so, we can work towards a future where quality education is accessible to all, regardless of geography, income or background. And that's the potential of e-learning. It's more than just education. It's about democratizing knowledge, fostering lifelong learning and shaping a future where everyone can learn anything at any time from anywhere. Before I end today, I want to give you a little sneak peek into next week's episode. It's a topic that truly fascinates me and touches our lives in more ways than we can imagine. Artificial intelligence or AI. From the fantastic realms of science fiction to the heart of our everyday reality. The journey of AI is a very fascinating tale. We will explore its beginning, dive into its present day application and glimpse into the future. What role does AI play in our lives today? 
and how might it shape our world in the years to come? How has it moved from the pages of speculative fiction to become a crucial part of our technology landscape? And as I always do, let's end this episode with a question for you. In what way has e-learning made a significant difference in your life or someone you know life? You can leave your comments either down below in the comments or on my website, thegeekyboomer.com, where I have a form for you to fill out. And I will try to share some of your answers in a future episode. I hope you will join me in my next episode when we embark on a journey from science fiction to reality. You don't want to miss it. Bye.